I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Alex McDougall, the CIO of Bicameral Ventures. Alex, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show today. It's a pleasure to have you here. No problem, Ashton. Happy to be here. It's uh, going to be fun. Very fun. Let's focus on Bicameral Ventures. First of all, what does Bicameral Ventures mean and how would you best describe your company's investment philosophies? Sure. So I come from the uh, mergers and acquisitions world historically as an investment banker before. Um, and I've seen some of the challenges around combining a bunch of different pieces together to try and solve complex problems. And a lot of mergers end up destroying value. So what we tried to do with Bicameral was let's pick a big challenging problem of today. And instead of trying to solve it via a merged company, let's create this big interconnected fund where we're really focused on the synergies that our portfolio companies have with each other and focused on solving uh, these big problems from, a, from an interconnected perspective. So whether that's different layers of a technology stack or different solutions in uh, different verticals that are working together, we really place a premium on the, the companies working together from a synergy perspective. So where the name Bicameral comes from and how we think about our investment philosophy is First and foremost, bicameral means something that's governed by two chambers of thought. So first and foremost, everything we invest in needs to be a wonderful venture capital investment. Great team, great business model, great upside, great runway. But secondly, where does it fit within this interconnected model that we're building, within this ecosystem? Where does it fit within that bigger picture? So we really take this sort of bicameral approach to every investment that we make. And that's some of the full philosophy that we think about when we're making investments and happy to get deeper into uh, some of the, the bigger picture stuff as well as we go. That's great, Alex. And what does the portfolio look like? I know you're looking at this interconnectedness. Um, what are all of the different pieces that you guys have accumulated so far? Sure. So we focus in the Web3 space, so in the blockchain space. And because blockchain is such a great tool towards helping us interact better on the Internet, and that's one of the biggest things that we look at from a, uh, from a big picture thesis perspective is how do we create more trust in between peer-to-peer -peer interactions on the Internet? And so where that gets actually back to from a blockchain perspective and from what we're specifically invested in is the core protocol itself at the bottom layer generates a lot of these building blocks that allow us to have these decentralized interactions on the internet. Whether it's provable reputation, whether it's instant settlement, a lot of just the, the reasons that we have challenges in doing digital commerce today can theoretically be solved by blockchain. But what the, what the fund that we're trying to put together, the fund that we are putting together has solved is going from not just the core protocol to something that's built on top of it, but allowing the people who are building the experiences that users actually touch and feel or enterprises touch and feel, those end experiences that are powered by blockchain likely need some additional layers in the middle, similar to how the Web 2.0 stack works with AWS um, and, and other sort of those, those abstraction layers that take away the, the rawness of that underlying technology. So when we think about our portfolio, we're invested in the core protocol technology we're also invested in these middleware plays, which are much more blockchain as a service and a pretty standard business model, to be honest. Um, and then we have certain projects that are what we call layer two protocols. So whether it's a data transmission play or another way to leverage the underlying block of blockchain. And then we have certain projects that are actually what's sort of above the technological abstraction line of projects that people can touch and feel. So gaming, we're working with a wonderful project called Velocia that's about to go live in Miami that's helping the city and sent people to get around the city different ways, so to improve congestion and, uh, and traffic uh, and, and a few other projects in that vein. So we think about it from a lot of different layers of the stack as well as a lot of different verticals and different business models, but that are all working together to solve all these problems. Hmm. It's an interesting perspective. And I saw that a lot of the investments revolve around the Aeon blockchain. Now, why Aeon and why is it so good? Sure. So in, the reason we like Aeon is for two things that are key to our focus and mandate as well. Um, interoperability and accessibility. And so when we think about what's actually going to move this Web3 complex forward, it's going to be experiences that are seamless and are viscerally better than what we have today. So whether it's cheaper, faster, more provably private, more tailored 
something where it makes it an objective no-brainer for an enterprise or a consumer to move over and use that. And those experiences aren't going to be built based on a monolithic blockchain. So whether it's one that does everything, there's going to be several different ideas and several different um, technologies that power a full real business model in the real world today. So when, when Aon thinks about uh, what the run rate decentralized world is going to look like, there's room for a lot of different technologies to fit within that. And the other thing that we really like about, uh, about the protocol, especially recently, is um, they've launched something called it's the first Java-based virtual machine that runs on top of blockchain called the Aon Virtual Machine. And so when, when we think about how do we get more developers who are skilled in more different areas and more different verticals, to build on top of blockchain, one of the big things is what's the tool set? What's the actual uh, libraries that these developers can play with? And the more that you can speak their language and the more that you can create these things that they're already familiar with, the Java virtual machine is, is one of the most well-known uh, pieces of code in the world. So the more that you can take that and apply this, uh, this technology to the bottom of it, it's essentially abstraction built right into the core protocol layer. So when we look at building a universe of the solutions at the top layer that are leveraging this decentralized world at the bottom, Aon has those kind of two key things that really make it appealing to us in our product, in our portfolio. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And you spoke a little bit about interoperability. That comes to mind the Ethereum blockchain having such a wide developer focus and years of you know developers working on dApps on Ethereum right now. Is there any Ethereum interoperability or just with the programming languages to allow people to more easily understand how to code onto Aon and make it easy for people to develop applications? Sure, great question. And so the actual, the initial um, production launch of interoperability was something that Aon released in November of last year called the Aon Token Bridge, which was a bridge, as Aon was initially launched as an ERC-20 on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So it was a token bridge that allowed in a purely decentralized manner um, about 100 million tokens of ERC-20 tokens to be sent over this bridge from, a or from Ethereum to uh, the Aon mainnet coins afterwards. So the majority of the tokens that are on Aon mainnet today were once actually ERC-20 tokens. So there, there's definitely a, a lot of compatibility. The original uh, Aon virtual machine was an enhanced version of the Ethereum virtual machine. So some different changes in there to make it run slightly faster and better. Uh, Solidity is definitely something that can still be compiled within the uh, within the, Ethereum, or the enhanced Ethereum virtual machine and within the Amber virtual machine. So absolutely, there's there's definitely a lot of overlap that makes it easy for Ethereum developers to come over and build on top of Aon. But where a lot of the focus is is the 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 blockchain developer community is very small compared to the macro developer community out there. So as much as we want to migrate and more enhance rather, because we don't really think about it from a competitive perspective, as much as we want to enhance the toolkit of people who are already developing on blockchain, we really want to make it as accessible as possible to people who are net new to the industry and say, hey, you can develop on whatever you want. Also, here's 15 modules that can add different targeted features to whatever you're building. And that's really how this is all going to work to, uh, together in the long run, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a great ideology, Alex. Now, I looked into the Clan Play application that is part of your guys' portfolio, and uh, being a game, it has quite a lot of traction already. How important does your firm see the gaming industry in advancing blockchain adoption and bringing it to the mainstream? No, gaming's fantastic, um, it, and it just from a even a, a fundamental. It's a bunch of really technologically enabled users already. They're already familiar with the simulation of value running through a digital game. They're already familiar with some kind of digitized version of their own life where what they do creates scores and allows you to do things, which is one of the potential uh, implications of Web3 for reality. So it's gaming is a simulation of a theoretical Web3 world. And so it's a perfect place for blockchain to take hold and take root. So what Play does, and there's, there's a lot of games that, that work on the non-fungible token side and, uh, and just sort of paying, um, using value within a game on, from the blockchain, which is all very, very cool and interesting. What Clan Play does that we really find fascinating, and this is what uh, they were invited to consensus in CES Asia this year to, to showcase, is 
the ability to add a blockchain layer to existing games. So Clanplay is integrated with Fortnite, they're integrated with PUBG, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, and essentially, without getting too technical into it, um, they use the APIs from those games as oracles to trigger smart contracts. So what that allows you to do in its simplest iteration is create massive tournaments where players from across games can all get together and compete on a level playing field. It also allows you to create provably fair tournaments. If you're competing against somebody one-on-one -on -one and you want to have a real crypto prize pool, you can have the results written to a blockchain and actually trigger that, that, um, that decentralized pay payment. Where we see claim play going long term, which is really interesting, is the ability to accumulate a self-sovereign gamer profile. So every time, right now, every time you play in a game, you do stuff in that game, your character in that game earns experience, earns items, earns you know, a reputation of what they've done. But the second you go to another game, you're starting net new again. So as you can start to add layers on top of games, so have your profile follow you around or have this meta profile that works across a bunch of different games, you can really add a lot of value to the entire gamer landscape rather than having it siloed off in between these games. You can start creating clans that play across games together. You can start having a much better direct link between developers and players as you can see a player's entire profile. The advertisement industry of targeting and figuring out exactly who uh, who's playing what. There's just some sort of deeper, richer experience you can have when you start layering on some of this decentralized technology uh, to even existing games. Yeah, it's interesting to see how popular uh, games have become on the blockchain. And it's funny that that's one of the first use cases sort of in the mainstream world that's gained adoption. And, uh, Gambling. <laughs> with, with, yeah, and with the market as well going up, there's a lot of gambling going on with that specifically. But that doesn't really, uh, you know, make it go past gaming and gambling to the mainstream world with this blockchain technology. So, and so what does Bicameral Ventures see as their investment horizon for your portfolio? Is, is this like a really, really long term game? Or are you guys looking at shorter investment horizons? No, definitely. I mean, we, we think there's a big dearth of capital in this industry that actually looks at it from a venture capital mindset. I mean, you, you see some uh, numbers thrown around, uh, especially earlier, of like a, a billion dollars has been invested or two billion dollars. And what have we done with it? And really, it's important to hive off what the actual long term capital is compared to what these short term um, speculators are essentially putting in. And as importantly, which projects are looking for that long-term capital and which are essentially just vehicles to capture that short-term hot money, which I would argue was a lot of what happened in 2017 was short money, finding short vehicles and making a uh, match made in hell to <laughs> a certain extent. So our, our mindset is really is long-term. And, and we think about it actually as a little bit um, uh, over time. So we do want to be exposed to certain projects that make sense today within today's crypto markets that can use today's technology to do things. So we just announced an investment this morning in a fantastic new custodian uh, called Balance based out of Toronto that um, is looking both at the, tr the existing way of just storing and safeguarding assets, but as importantly or potentially more importantly, they want to give you an ability to actually operationalize those assets in a way that's a similar interface to what you see with your online banking today. So a project that has a bill is that's actually looking to use them for grants and payments and rewards and things like that. They're not going to go to a vault every day and do that stuff. An enterprise that's looking to use tokens to buy data or to actually interact better with, uh, with advertisers and their clients, mm -hmm. they're going to need an easy way to make that actually happen. So within all of our projects, we want to have something that makes sense today, but that vision of what it's going to be in seven to 10 years. And then we do have certain projects that are farther down the line that are really built towards this full run rate Web3 world. A lot of that is on the data self-sovereignty, personalized AI, um, provably private, tailored experiences, consumable data. So a lot of the stuff where we think the world's going to go towards, we want to have projects that are building that world and also will have the tools in place to make the experiences that when that actually happens. Mm -hmm. That's great. And congratulations on, on balance. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what's next for Bicameral Ventures, the next steps? Are you guys looking to expand your portfolio further? And where are you specifically looking to make an impact? 
Definitely. So we're, we're absolutely looking to expand our portfolio further. And I think where, where we started to look is these adjacent virtualized technologies. So as you go through um, the real value proposition of blockchain, one of it is obviously programmable money. So when something happens, money will pay itself to somebody or value will transfer itself to somebody which allows you to take a whole layer of, of human interaction and centralization out of, the, out of the equation. But all of those actions need to be digitized and we live in an analog world. So things like the internet of things has a huge tangential impact on how valuable blockchain can be because when you have a fully run rate internet of things world, you can have all of these oracles and all of these decentralized signals that trigger the smart money to actually pay itself around. Same with uh, artificial intelligence. When you're creating these networks that run on specific black and white rules and they start running at machine speed, we're going to need great AI to be able to actually manage those networks. Otherwise, they'll spin out of control. Similar to how if you've ever built an Excel model and you build in a circular reference and you don't do it right, everything blows the hell up. So you need these sort of advanced level systems that are running at machine speed to operate in the machine speed commerce world. So where we're looking now is in the terms of these building blocks and how we're creating these, this uh, platform for these experiences to be built on top. We're really looking at broadening out the bottom part of our technological base. So we want to have more types of tools, more types of relationships. Um, we're, we've recently joined the Decentralized AI Alliance, which is run by Singularity so Ben, and so we're really getting close into that uh, decentralized AI world. We're looking more at some relationships with uh, with IoT accelerators. We really want to broaden out to expand this building block, and then when we look at these top level projects, work with them to incorporate all of these different technologies. And also when we're looking at the middleware layer, look for middleware that instead of just abstracting away the blockchain side, is looking at how to actually make it simple to incorporate IoT and blockchain or IoT and AI and blockchain. So ways to sort of add in these core technologies and ways to make that operational and the projects at the top that actually use those layers. Amazing. Sounds like you guys have uh, a great plan in the works and uh, your portfolio is expanding. So that's all the time that we have for now, Alex, but I really appreciate you taking the time today uh, to come on the show and uh, all the best of luck moving forward with Bicameral Ventures. No problem. Thanks very much, Ashton. Appreciate you having me.